morning, church. It is so good for us to be together this morning. It is a blessing for us to worship uh, Providence and Crooks Memorial United Methodist Churches as a one church family. And for those of you who are joining, who are not members of the church, we are glad that you are with us as well. And good morning, church. On behalf of Kirk's Memorial United Methodist Church, I want to welcome you all as well, whether you are calling in or Zooming in or with us on Facebook Live. It is a good morning to be church together. Um, I do want to just uh, invite you, if you haven't already, to take use of the chat features, whether in Zoom or on Facebook Live. We know those of you on the phone can't do this, but we would love to know you're here if you haven't already said a good morning and let us know that you are here in worship with us. And then also we're gonna ask everyone on Zoom to keep their videos off. That helps us for our recording later uh, today. And so friends, as we continue to worship together, um, I hope we're ready to celebrate Palm Sunday this morning. And we are about to see some of the children from both of our churches give us a special greeting through a Palm Liturgy. The streets of the Holy City were lined with a great crowd. They waved their palms and cried, Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Jesus rode quietly among them, sitting on a donkey, the huge throng cried louder, Hosanna, Hosanna. Jesus was the promised Messiah who would lead them in war against all their enemies. Hosanna, Hosanna. The people did not understand who Jesus truly was. They only knew to shout, Hosanna, Hosanna. The crowd did not know the things Jesus knew in his heart and knowing he still came. Hosanna, Hosanna. Jesus knew that faithful Peter would still deny him three times. Still, he came to Jerusalem. Hosanna, Hosanna. He knew he would be betrayed by Judas for some silver, but still he came to Jerusalem. Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Jesus knew the cruel cross awaited him on Calvary's hill. Still, he went to Jerusalem. Hosanna, Hosanna. Does anyone wonder why he did it? why he chose to suffer so because he loves you that is why hosanna to jesus christ hosanna to god's son hosanna to my lord <laughs> hosanna hosanna friends i want to share with you this passage from mark the chapter is 11, the verses are 1 through 11. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this. The Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying that colt? And they told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. And they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. And many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. And then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. 
At this time, we're going to join together, if you would, sing loud and boisterously, all glory, laud, and honor. time where we invite our children who are with us to come a little closer if they're not already to our screen, but I pray that our message for our children is also helpful for our big children as well. And so friends, this morning I was thinking about, I wanted to tell you um, that a long time ago I took a really special trip when I was in seminary and I got to go to a place called India. And we were there for about two weeks and we traveled around to different places and went some, to some different villages and different places where people lived. And one of the really neat things that happened is every time we came to a new place, uh, the people who lived there greeted us with these really beautiful flowered necklaces. So we got all these wonderful flowered necklaces, like live flowers, real flowers. And sometimes they would even sing and, and cheer when we got there. And it made me think a little bit about what we're celebrating today, because we remember that today is the day that we celebrate when Jesus entered Jerusalem, uh, the, the week that he died. And on this day, when he entered Jerusalem, he rode in on a donkey. Now, people weren't expecting that. People were really thinking some mighty king was going to come and save them. And so they didn't completely understand who Jesus was but they knew for sure that he was sent from God. And so they were so excited when he rode into Jerusalem that they took palm branches. So all of us remember, especially the kids remember that usually on Palm Sunday, we wave big palm branches in worship and even walk around the sanctuary while we sing and wave those. And I am really missing that today. But I can image and imagine us doing that and remember times that we have. And so I give thanks for that but they would wave these palms because palms in that time, time and day were a way to welcome people. And so that was a sign of welcome and celebration to Jesus as he entered into Jerusalem. 
And then they exclaimed this really important word. They said, Hosanna, Hosanna. And that meant save us. Because even though they weren't exactly sure who Jesus was or what he was doing, they knew he was sent from God. And they called on him to save them. Because where they, where they were living and when they were living, things were really, really hard. It wasn't a good time and, and, and bad things were happening. And they felt like they needed to be freed from that. Now, what we know is that Jesus did come to free to free all of us, not just from that way of living, but more importantly, to free us to be able to be in relationship with God. And so the people were right to be joyous and excited when Jesus entered Jerusalem. And so I want us to think about, the reason I'm, I'm mentioning this is I want you to think about three things this week. And this is really for all of us. But if you're a child and you're with your family, I want you to maybe really think about these, and this is something you can talk about together. These are three really good questions for us this week. What are ways that you are feeling the joys of Christ, the joy of Christ, even in the midst of this time when we're stuck at home and not getting to go to school or, or to places that we're used to not certainly getting to come to the sanctuary and worship all together and be in person, how are you still experiencing the joy of Christ? And then what traditions do you take joy in during Holy Week? So maybe those are things like things we do to get ready for Easter. Maybe you're going to make special things. Or maybe uh, something Hannah and I have done is um, I cut out some Easter egg shapes out of construction paper, and she's decorated those, and we're going to put those in our windows. Uh, what are some things that you can make or bake or, or get ready? for celebrating? And then how will you continue to find joy even in the midst of uncertainty? That even in the midst of the time that we're in, how can we still find joy? So I find joy this morning in watching us all interact. Uh, I know I can't see all of you, but I know you're there. And especially for those who are on Facebook Live and on Zoom, absolutely love seeing us welcoming one another and sharing and talking in the midst of our chat boxes. And so friends, I just invite you to carry those questions with you this week and even in the weeks ahead, but we know that we anticipate an especially joyous celebration next Sunday as we celebrate the resurrection of Christ. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we give you thanks knowing that your love is always with us no matter what that you are with us in these times, that your provision and grace is with us. And even though we can't be with each other and our friends, especially that our children can't see one another uh, and, and other adults, Lord, we just know that you are still bringing us along. So continue to shower us with your love and your grace. We pray all these things in Christ's name. Amen. This is a time now when we can offer to the Lord the gifts that he has given us to be stewards over. And I'm thinking about not just our financial gifts, although those are very important and we certainly need uh, to ask you to continue to, to give to the churches as you can um, so that we can continue to pay the bills and, and maintain the building and pay the salaries for our staff um, and to do the ministries that we do collectively as uh, denomination. But um, I'm also thinking about the ways in which we give back to God with our lives, the things that we do, the ways that we're in relationship with others. Um, and so as we enter into this time of offering, I want to invite you to think of these ways that you can give back to God of your finances, certainly, but also of your time and of your talents. And of your Would you pray with me? The crowds offered you their coats to walk on. They waved palm branches honoring your presence. Today we honor you, Lord, with our faithful tithes and offerings. We lay these gifts before you, humble tokens of our love, a public display of affection for our King of Kings. Amen.
brothers and sisters, whenever we come together, it is a blessing that we have to lift each other up in prayer. And this is a time for us to do that. I want you to um, take advantage of the chat function. If you would like to lift up your joys or concerns, um, you may do that. Please just use first names of folks um, just to protect their privacy. Um, and I wanna remind you that though we are not meeting in our buildings, um, Pastor Barbara and I both are available to you if you want to call or talk with us. If you need someone to pray with you over the phone, um, we are more than happy to do that. And we certainly are praying for you every day. Um, but if you need specific prayer, um, we would love for you to call us and, and uh, we would love to pray with you in that way. Um, I'm going to begin us in a time of prayer and, and then we're going to have some time in there where you can lift up your prayers before the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious God, we join today with Christians all over the world who pray for each other, who pray for all of your creation. Lord, we are mindful that though our cultures and our practices might vary, our central commonality is faith in Jesus Christ. Lord, as we take some time now to lift our prayers of joy and those of our concern before you, Lord, we pray as those who trust in your faithful mercy and love. Lord, we pray that you would hear our prayers. Lord God, we give thanks for birthdays and celebrations, even in the midst of this social distancing. Lord, our spirits are united with each other. Lord, we pray for Barb and Dawn for healing. Lord, we pray for Kelsey and Arash who are working on the front lines in the medical field and for all those, Lord, who are working as first responders. For John and Nicole, for Sarah, for all those who are homeless in this time. And Lord, we give thanks for the homes that we have. For Walt. For parents and children who are in the midst of supporting one another through moves and through military orders. Lord, we pray your healing over Sue. Lord God, we know that you hear all the prayers that we lift up, those that we name aloud and those that we name in our hearts. And so we lift them up to you now. Lord, on this day, when we remember Jesus riding into Jerusalem, prepared to love the world, even us, so perfectly and completely, that he would submit himself to the vast array of human emotions and physical struggles and pain, Lord, we take comfort in knowing that nothing we experience in this life is unknown to you. Lord, we lift up those directly affected by the COVID-19 virus, the families and friends who are living with fear and anxiety, those who have feelings of isolation and loneliness. Lord, help us to encourage and love one another, to bring comfort and peace in the midst of this storm. Lord, the crowds that gathered to see Jesus riding into the gates of the city cried out, as we also cry out this day, Lord, save us, heal us, reform us, make the world better and make us better. Lord, create us anew to be the people that you originally created us to be. As we enter this holy week, Lord, we confess that we would prefer to leap right on to Easter because it is hard work when we meditate upon the cross. But Lord, beneath the cross of Jesus we stand and so we confess our brokenness. We confess the ways in which we wound our lives and the lives of others and the earth. Lord God, renew us, forgive us, enable us to grow and to live 
as your holy people. Help us to tend this ground, this earth, the relationships that you have given us, that you might be glorified by our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, as he taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So friends, we're, uh, we recognize that this week is not like any others that we're meant to experience in the life of our church, really in the liturgical calendar. We know this week to be Holy Week. And we move from the hosannas of today to the cross on Good Friday and the ceiling of a tomb. And today we're going to encounter that whole story to prepare us. And we're going to encounter it in both song and in word. And so as we move through this story, we're going to have just a moment of some, uh, some music to prepare our heart. And then we're just going to move through the songs and the story um, as if it's the full story. And so let our hearts prepare to hear the passion of Jesus Christ. The Passion Story. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar a very costly ointment of nard. She broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me, for you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She, ha what she has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly I tell you, whenever the good news is proclaimed in the world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, 
where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples saying to them, go into the city and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came to the twelve, and when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one after another, surely not I. He said to them, it is one of the 12, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the son of man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the son of man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them and said, take this is my body then he took a cup and after giving thanks he gave it to them and all of them drank from it he said to them this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many truly i tell you i will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when i drink it new in the kingdom of god And when they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And Peter said, Vehemently, even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Stay here while I pray. And he took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to become distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am 
deeply grieved, even unto death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, with you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, and yet not what I want, but what you want. And he came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into this time of trial. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away praying the same words. And what's more, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy. And they didn't know what to say to him. And then he came a yet a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! You see, the hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, the one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when Judas came, he went up to Jesus at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me? as though I were a bandit? Each day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. Ah, but let the scriptures be fulfilled. And all of them deserted him and fled.
They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none, for many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power, and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? What all of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying, Prophesy! The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You were also with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed. And the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then after a little while the by, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered what that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. 
Then the chief priest accused him of many other things. Pilate asked him again, have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you? But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, it was his custom to release a prisoner for them, anyone whom they asked for. Now a man called Barabbas, who had committed murder during the insurrection, was a prisoner with the rebels. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again, Then what do you wish me to do with this man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate asked again, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas, and then after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, and they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him, they compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each would take.
It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Ha ha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, he saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness fell over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, Leme Sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he's calling for Elijah. And some ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, wait, let's see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw this, he breathed, that he had breathed his last, he said, truly, this man was God's son. from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and the younger and of Joseph, and Salome. These used to follow him and provide for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, 
and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth and taking it, taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid.
Brothers and sisters, we have been perfectly loved by God through Christ Jesus our Lord. And I want to invite you to keep this week a holy week as we anticipate the coming of Easter, but don't jump to that day just yet. Let us sit in the reality of all that God has done for us, what he is doing for us now, and what he has promised to do for us in the future. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.